and welcome back to GBS Morning Extra. To keep the conversation going, don't forget to follow us on our Twitter handle. That's at Kokgwen O Ochoro, at Bore Collins, hashtag GBS Morning Extra, to keep the conversation going. Today with us in studio is our political analyst, Collins Bore. Collins, karibu sana. Thank you very much for having me. Abari a weekend. Nzuri kabisa. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, uh, today, Collins, mm -hmm. uh, over the weekend we've seen the politics that have been going around and of course a lot going around. Yes. A lot have, have been going on. We still have the BBI slash 2022 noise being made. Yes. The dynasty versus Hasla uh, nation uh, politics still being pushed. True. Despite uh, the president, of course, uh, a few like a, a week or so yes uh, playing down this and also condemning those who have the narrative that uh, there's a dy there are dy dynasties Dynast in Kenya mm -hmm. and also of course w I would also like to engage you a little bit and uh, maybe talk to our viewer mm -hmm. about Ruto's intention by you know launching this uh, narrative of hustler versus dynasty uh, nations yes uh, maybe as we start, mm -hmm. I would like us first to speak about the Kibera uh, by-election, yes. which has clearly shown, uh, again, uh, allowed the, the ugly uh, division within the Jubilee camp to rear its head. Yes. Uh, we, you remember what happened last week? Yes, true. Uh, the party pulled out from mm -hmm. the race mm. in you know, the spirit of supporting the, the handshake. The handshake. Then yeah. a little bit later after that, I think after a lot of noise from the Tanga Tanga team, the party again decides to field yes. candidates. Yes. Again, we hear about, uh, you know, lists or letters that came from the party uh, purportedly signed by the, uh, the Secretary, uh, Secretary General, General mm -hmm. who later refutes and yes. says, <laughs> I did not send this letter. I don't even know about this. I know I was approached about these candidates, but I did not know about the letter. So what do you make of, of that? Yeah. So that does, does Jubilee start a chance in Kibra? Of course, uh, it's really hard for them. It's going to be a tall order mm -hmm. as far as the politics of Kibra is concerned. But that exposes the kind of divisions that we have in the Jubilee party mm -hmm. as at now. Yes. Because already it's in public domain. It's no longer rocket science. Although they're still denying. Science. Of course they <laughs> would deny it <laughs> in public. Mm -hmm. But if you see what they say and how they say it, mm -hmm. you realize that there are divisions. There is one camp that is loyal to President Uru and there is another one that is loyal to the deputy president. Yes. And uh, if what we read is anything to go by, then you realize that it is the deputy president who is fronting a candidate in mm -hmm. Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that he's already preparing his ground for the 2022 politics. politics. So mm -hmm. he's trying to test and see whether he will be able to convince some of the electorate in Kibra. Mm -hmm. And you remember in uh, the run up to 2017 elections, mm -hmm. he fielded a candidate, or Jubilee fielded a candidate in Langata. Mm -hmm. Then it was considered to be an ODM stronghold. An ODM stronghold. Yes, yes, because of course it has been represented by the former prime minister for some time. Yeah. But things for a long time. For a long time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, but things changed, and uh, you see, we had a Jubilee candidate carrying the day. Mm -hmm. So I think the deputy president is still trying to, you know, see whether he can convince, mm -hmm. uh, you know, areas that were seen or are, that are seen to be in ODM stronghold. Mm -hmm. And you can even look at the past by-elections that we have had, like in Wajia and uh, in uh, Embakasi, mm -hmm. uh, South, is yes. Mm -hmm. So we saw him come out clearly. Although Jubilee did not field a candidate in Embakasi South, but you realize that he supported silently. So mm -hmm. the wiper, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, a member of parliament. And he ended up winning. So I think Morabe. he was just... Uh, Mora, uh, he, he was, was it Morabe? More... Mother, mother, there's something. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes. Or who beat sum, who beat who Sumra? Beat, yeah, who beat Sumra? Uh -huh. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, Some, somebody like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure. So I think it is only a matter of time mm -hmm. we are going to see, uh, and I don't think that Jubilee is going to win. Is <laughs> uh, not going there to win. It's going just to test waters and see whether they are able to convince, uh, you know, a, a sizable uh, number of electorate. Uh -huh. mm. Now, speaking about the, the, the Hustler versus Dynasty 
uh, politics yes. or narrative, mm -hmm. it was obvious that when the narrative was first being pushed, mm. the narrative was actually to, you know, just taint or defend uh, Raila Odinga yes. and, uh, of course, Gideon Moy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was meant to target those yes, two people. That's true. Uh, and President Kenyatta was not actually being slotted in that mm. at, as per se when the narrative began because in their idea it was the contest was about uh, Ruto, Raila and Gideon in 20, come 2022. 20, Hence his intention was at first seen as targeting the two gentlemen yes. who are considered in Kenya as political princes because mm -hmm. of their fathers. But later on it turned out to be not the same mm -hmm. and you find that even the president is now offended by the term and is now you know smeared by this mud yes what do you make of that was that really was the intention of ruto to stain even the president or was it strategic or was it just by mistake that now even the president is dragged into all this politics of dynasty yes you understand that after the handshake i think things changed mm -hmm. and uh, the president has been seen to you know, be lenient towards the uh, prime, the former prime minister, yes. and I think that is where the rain started beating, and uh, Ruto or uh, Dr. Ruto realized mm. that probably President Uru may not be reading in the same script with him, and that's why this narrative of hustlers versus dynasties mm. uh, started coming in. Mm -hmm. At first, as you said, it did not, you know, involve the president, but after the handshake, now it's. Uh, you know, to very many supporters of the deputy president, mm -hmm. they think that uh, what we are now having is a group of uh, well-to-do, uh, you know, families mm -hmm. that we have known their fathers and all that, mm -hmm. and you know, they are well established and they are trying to fight one political princes, as some of yes, the uh, Tanga Tanga team would, want would to like call to them. Call them yeah. <laughs> yes, and you see, they are trying to now create that particular narrative. But you see that most politicians have come out clearly and said that it's not about where you come from. Mm -hmm. And that is what the president was uh, saying, yes. that leadership is not about who your father is, mm -hmm. it's not about where you come from, mm -hmm. it is about your art to serve the people of Kenya. Having said that, there yes. is uh, footage that I would like us also to look at so that we can proceed. Uh, of the president, of course, uh, mm -hmm. making these remarks about uh, the, uh, uh, the narrative or or the school of thought that there are dynasties in Kenya. Maybe mm. we take a listen. You know, you saw that come and tell me when I'm going to Lakini, I'm not. I promise. I have no such intention. But you know, when you hear people out there, you know, they talk. Oh, we mutu fulani dynasty he, you dynasty he. It's not about that. Leadership is not about where you were born. It's not about where you came from. It's not about the color of your skin. It is not about your tribe. It is just about a desire to serve, a desire to do good a desire to make a difference in the lives of people and anybody can do that and why do I say that I say that because even as we engage in our politics let us do so in a decent manner <laughs> Collins yes although the president does not mention names we know who was in that <laughs> audience yes we know who was the audience there true and uh, <laughs> we know you know, it has been clear, mm -hmm. the narrative, who is pushing the narrative. The narrative, yes. Uh, you know, clearly it's the Deputy President William Ruto and his 2022 campaign, uh, yes. uh, campaign team. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, so you realize that the President was directly addressing the Deputy President, uh -huh. who was in that particular meeting. Uh -huh. And uh, you see, before the President comes out public to uh, talk of an issue, that thing must have really... Uh, 
you know, disturbed him for quite some time. And he sort of wanted to clear the air mm -hmm. and tell his supporters that it's not about a few people coming together because mm -hmm. of their background. It was a very background. good opportunity as well. Yes, it was a good opportunity for the him. The anniversary of the founding father. Yes. Uh -huh. Who yes. is also his father. Who is also his <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. so uh, that is it was the deputy president who was being, uh, you know, spoken to. Yes. But of course, anytime you see the deputy president go out on functions, he would want to be seen as though he is still yeah. in good books with, <laughs> with uh, the president. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> but in essence, you realize that the president did not mince his words. He said it as it is and told the deputy president that you need to focus on something else. Stop this narrative mm -hmm. of hustlers versus dynasties. Mm -hmm. We now need to talk development and what you can do for the people of this country Have instead of you know engaging in that kind of narrative. You yes. know, having said that, Colin, mm -hmm. it's funny yes. because whenever the deputy president stands to speak, <laughs> yes, he speaks about he, he he refrains himself from talking about you know 2022 politics mm. or from uh, you know at directly attacking the president. Actually, most of his attacks go to Ule Mtu Akitendawili. Yes. But then as you listen to him, there's some, he's playing soft, but there's a message going out. There's something hidden under the table. There's a card hidden yes. under the table. But now, the, some, what has actually caught the attention of many people is mm. that although the deputy president himself does not directly attack the president, but before he stands to speak, you know, those people who stand to speak clearly attack the president directly. And this has actually come out very clearly. And we've seen uh, from the Kia Leweke team mm -hmm. recently, I think that was last week, yes. about four or five days ago, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Nyeri, is it Nyeri, Nyeri South Nyeri MP? Nyeri Gujiri, uh, uh, Wambogo. Gujiri Wambogo, yes, yes. who came out very clearly and actually spoke, put a finger on this. And mm -hmm. I would like us to take a look at that uh, footage and listen into that footage, and then maybe you can respond to that. And then, in 1980, when I uh, was preparing to do Standard 7, and we also need to make it clear, people need to stop lying to us. I can't come here and say me, I'll not do campaigns, but the people I have come with, spend 30 minutes, an hour, doing campaigns. Then me, when I stand up, I say, there's nothing wrong with doing, we're not doing campaigns, people need to stop doing campaigns. We are not fools. As Kenyans, I, I don't know about other people. Me, I'm only being chosen to represent the people of Nyeri Town constituency. The people of Nyeri Town constituency, who are represented by this group of people who are here, have said that they will not allow premature politics in Nyeri Town constituency. Premature politics, is that what Ruto is playing? Gunjiri uh, Wambogo has a point there. Mm -hmm. I agree with him because every time the, pr uh, the deputy president goes out on his uh, quote-unquote development tours around the country, there are those people who accompany him, uh, members of parliament, senators, mm -hmm. and all that. And any time they rise to speak, as uh, Gunjiri puts it, mm -hmm. every time they rise to speak, they play politics. Yes. But when the time comes for the deputy president to speak, mm -hmm. he sort of tries to use to refrain from that. <laughs> but already the message has been passed that, yes. you know, we are here to mm -hmm. uh, do this development. But at the same time, we are also aware that there is some... Uh, asking for votes. Uh, asking <laughs> for votes. So it, it goes without saying that, of course, he's engaging in uh, 2022 politics, whether premature or not. Mm -hmm. It's the people of Kenya to judge. Mm -hmm. mm. No. Something else that I've come out very clearly, and uh, I, I would like to term it as some, some level of hypocrisy, mm -hmm. especially when we talk about the hustler versus dynasty politics. Pardon my language, but I think some of the top politicians who mm. are intending to vie for presidency or have the are trying to set themselves mm. for the same, the deputy president himself being included, mm -hmm. and the likes of uh, Musalia Mudavadi, yes. who the ANC leader, who has now come out very strongly to condemn the, the, the former prime minister. Yes. And mm -hmm. always, whenever he stands, mm. he speaks about, you know, how is it and he has to be in opposition at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, condemning, you know, Raila and also 
pushing the narrative towards the sides, although not directly, yes. but on occasion, mm. in occasion, uh, pushing the narrative of, uh, of hustlers versus, uh, versus uh, dynasties. Mm. These are people who have clearly benefited from the dynasties or yes. political inheritance. Take, for instance, uh, like Mudavadi. Mudavadi goes down in the Kenyan history as the short, as the first uh, or the shortest the serving the vice president. Vice president. Uh, we, he assumed office during mm -hmm. the final weeks of President uh, <laughs> Moy's regime. Yes. <laughs> Mudavadi is also notably one of the earlier beneficiaries of mm -hmm. the culture of political inheritance, yes. if we may say that, mm -hmm. after succeeding his late father, mm -hmm. who was the MP for Sabati in 1989. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, he was actually made to assume, he was actually given the docket that his father occupied when at the time of his uh, demise. Yes. What, what do we say about this? I, is this politics of dynasty versus Hasla purely hypocrisy that is being pushed about by these politicians? It is hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. It is hypocrisy because you realize that if we are talking about dynasties, if you ask me, for now, Ruto is no longer uh, an hustler. Mm -hmm. he is, you cannot tell me that. He's, He's a billionaire as <laughs> we speak. So, you know, coming out and telling us, because at the end of the day, you realize that even these people who are being referred to as dynasties mm -hmm. have a journey. Sure. They have come through a journey, or even their fathers have struggled mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. uh, where they were, and they took over from there. So at uh, that particular point, it is very, you know, there is a thin line between uh, Ruto <laughs> calling himself a hustler mm -hmm. and uh, the issue of dynasty, because at the end of the day, all of them, if you ask me, are already dynasty. Even, uh, you know, Mudavadi, uh, Mudavadi <laughs> even Ruto is already building a household name for himself, sure, sure. and he's trying to be a dynasty. Mm -hmm. So he should stop this hustler narrative mm -hmm. and start focusing on, you know, uh, on, on, on real issues that will help him clinch the 2022 mm -hmm. seat. Because I can tell you for free uh, that if he goes on talking about his hustler thing, it may not sell. Because mm -hmm. people at the end of the day will now start realizing that apart from where you come from, what else are you bringing mm -hmm. to the people of this, country. Of this country? Yes, so it is not about that. And uh, we should leave all these narratives. Let people have a playground where they can give their issues without focusing on who they are where they come from, mm -hmm. because this issue of dynasty for me doesn't hold water. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a narrative that seems to be pushed, uh, that they're pushing around. Uh, and uh, one would also want to ask this question, Collins. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it, I'm very glad that uh, I'm, I'm talking to you. Yes. You know, and I believe that your age actually is yes. below 40. <laughs> and that makes me very comfortable yes. in terms of talking about the future of Kenyan politics, in terms of are we discussing issues or are we discussing individuals? Yes. The kind of narrative that is being driven right now, we are actually being made to focus or to think or to make our decision in terms of who will we vote for mm -hmm. come 2022 yes. in regard to who is your father yes. or who is your mother mm -hmm. or what is your family. Yes. Is that, I mean, is that the, dire the direction that the Kenyan politics is going as a young politician or mm. a, as a young person who has political interests yes. or who understands the Kenyan politics? Is it the kind of politics that you want to do in Kenya going forward? Going forward, I think we need to change mm -hmm. because uh, for very many years we have always dwelt on our tribes, we have always dwelt on individuals, and we have forgotten to look at those particular people who have a real development agenda for this particular country. Mm -hmm. And as a country, we must realize that the issue of tribe does not help us at the end of the day. Sure. It is a particular individual who is willing to transform this country. Mm -hmm. And we must look at their track record. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, all these leaders who are uh, gang, uh, you know, saying that they want to vie for president in 2022 mm -hmm. are people who have been in government before. So if we as Always Kenyans, been in government. we have been in government. <laughs> Some have been prime ministers, Since we have regime. deputy prime minister, we have ministers. Mm -hmm. What have they done when they were in government? Raila so himself have served both in the Moi regime yes, and, and in also the in the Kibaki, Kibaki regime. regime. So we must ask ourselves, what did they do when they were there? Mm -hmm we must start looking at their you know, track record. Mm -hmm. But you see, the kind of politics we have in Kenya as it stands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we just look at a person and we ask, uh, what is the last name of that person? Mm -hmm. uh, if it is Ruto, uh, that is the Kalenjin Kingpin. If it is Kenyatta, exactly. the Kikuyu Kingpin, which mm -hmm. we miss the point. Mm -hmm. We must start treating individuals as Kenyans individuals, yeah. and let them 
give us what they want to do for this country. Mm -hmm. And moving forward, uh, I, I want to talk to the youth out there that mm -hmm. it is high time we also realize that we have a role to play in this country. Mm -hmm. Our politics cannot be pegged on particular individuals. We must change the narrative. We must change. We cannot be hearing the same names every now and then. Mm -hmm. Let Kenyans come out and let us support them. Mm -hmm. Because youth, are, you know, we are the highest population in this country. Definitely. So if we were to uh, come up with our own uh, person and push him and, you know, we see that he has real issues, this country will uh, really change. But this particular uh, narrative of every now and then looking at the tribe of a person, we must change that as a country mm -hmm. and we must focus on real issues that will transform this country. Mm -hmm. uh, I want us to take a short break, but then before we do that, I would mm -hmm. just like to, you know, draw your thought a little bit on, you know, the BBI. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, is the BBI really for Kenyans? Listening to the guys, you know, of course, campaigning for the BBI, mm -hmm. and uh, the BBI probably takes us back to the nine points yes. that were raised during the handshake, mm -hmm. which uh, at that time really were matters, of course, yes. because uh, it is after the handshake that Kenya realized some come. Mm -hmm. Kenya was really taking a very ugly direction, yes. scary direction, but then after the handshake and the proposal for the BBI, then th then we saw come, yes. and there were points there. Most of them standing out were political reforms, I would say electoral reforms mm -hmm. that were proposed by the, by, by the NASA CAB. What do you make of the BBI going forward? We, are, we know the report is yet to come out to be yes. made public, but what do you make of, of the whole narrative of the BBI? Uh, the BBI is, uh, is an initiative that for me does not appeal to me mm -hmm. because you realize that it is only pegged on, you know, expanding the executive. If the talk that we are hearing is anything to go by, mm -hmm. every time I hear those who support the BBI speak, mm -hmm. they will talk about expanding the executive in a bid to have an, in an inclusive government. Mm -hmm. But inclusivity is not about having individuals because they are from different tribes at the top there mm -hmm. that will not solve the problem mm -hmm. we need to look at the real issues that are affecting kenyans and what are the real and issues? the real issues are what for me if you were to ask me to choose between punguza mizigo and uh, building bridges initiative mm -hmm. i'll go for punguza mizigo mm -hmm. because the issues that we have is a high wage bill in this country mm -hmm. we spend much of our money in recurrent expenditure. But the BBI also proposes for a cut down in terms of reducing the number of constituencies, hence, of course, still. But you see, we, we are yet to see what they have for us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, they have not had Honorable Raila go, uh, Odinga go out in public and talk about that. Mm -hmm. What they have been focusing a lot more is only on positions, which they miss the point. If they want to appeal to the Kenyans, mm -hmm. then they must start giving the entire uh, you know, pro uh, proposals that they have. But they had a committee that was going around the country the committee collecting... Was there. Uh, but let me tell you one thing. Probably. One At the end of the day, this, if you ask me fro from where I see it, and mm -hmm. uh, in my view, mm -hmm. uh, this was just public relations. All right. Because at the end of the day, what will happen mm -hmm. is that we'll have a referendum. Mm -hmm. So that was the end point of this particular mm -hmm. initiative. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really about all these particular issues. So it's a means, means just to justify yes, the end. to justify that the end. That is true. We that we went, we talked to the public. But then someone would want to say the same uh, in regard to the Punguza Mzigo because uh, honestly speaking, many Kenyans, if you ask them, they will tell you, I never saw a Kuru or court come to us and propose to us and tell us, hey, this is what is happening it and is. this is what we want to make. And now they're moving in counties. They've mm -hmm. actually been given the mandate. They're yes. moving in county assemblies and uh, they're presenting the document for discussion in county assemblies. It of is course, with the blessing mm -hmm. of the IABC. Yes, it is true that uh, Kuru Accord did not have uh, proper, uh, you know, uh, engagement with the public. And uh, I want at this point to also blame the Kenyan media to some point because yes. they didn't give him enough airtime <laughs> at that particular time. Mm -hmm. A Kuru Accord started getting airtime the moment he, you know, the, the IBC passed that particular mm -hmm. uh, initiative and gave them a go-ahead. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, from the onset, mm -hmm. he really struggled mm -hmm. to get the attention of the public. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you see, even though he did not go out there to talk to the people, mm -hmm. those of us who have read the 
proposals by the Punguza Mizigo, we'll agree that they are proposals that you know resonate very well with the common Mwananchi, mm -hmm. because he's talking about reducing the number of elected members, reducing, reducing the, the number, number of elected, elected members, members of parliament to yes. represent people, but we are talking about mm. one representative per constituency, which... It's, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you it, look... I, mm -hmm. I would say one would want to argue that yes. that actually undermines the spirit of devolution. It we are going back up there. It, it, at the end of the day, we still have the MCS. What is their role in the county, mm -hmm. uh, in the counties? Mm -hmm. They are in their county assemblies to push for agendas in those. In fact, what we are having in this country are duplication of duties, mm -hmm. right? Because every time you go, sometimes I we go asking, who is building this road? You are being told it's the national government. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the MP wants to take credit. The MCA wants to. So well, there is duplication of duties. Mm -hmm. Let the MCAs who are at the ground there do their thing mm -hmm. and work together with the county government. Mm -hmm. But this issue of MPs, what we are now having in our national assembly sometimes leaves a lot to be desired because we have particular members of parliament who just take advantage and go there to get allowances and there is nothing that uh, they do to the public. So I support Ekuru Accords in calling for a reduction of these uh, elected members of parliament. Well, Collins, we take a short break now, viewer. If you are just joining us, you're watching GBS Morning Extra and we are with us in studio today, Collins Bore, who is a political analyst. Remember to keep the conversation going. Hashtag GBS Morning Extra. Also, at Kok Gwen O Ochoro at Bore Collins. We take a short break. We'll be right back after this.